protein purification is a series of processes intended to isolate one or a few proteins from a complex mixture, usually cells, tissues or whole organisms. Protein purification is vital for the characterization of the function, structure and interactions of the protein of interest. The purification process may separate the protein and non-protein parts of the mixture, and finally separate the desired protein from all other proteins. Separation of one protein from all others is typically the most laborious aspect of protein purification. Separation steps usually exploit differences in protein size, physicochemical properties, binding affinity and biological activity. The pure result may be termed protein isolate. The methods used in protein purification can roughly be divided into analytical and preparative methods. The distinction is not exact, but the deciding factor is the amount of protein that can practically be purified with that method. Analytical methods aim to detect and identify a protein in a mixture, whereas preparative methods aim to produce large quantities of the protein for other purposes, such as structural biology or industrial use. In general, the preparative methods can be used in analytical applications, but not the other way around. Purpose Protein purification is either preparative or analytical. Preparative purifications aim to produce a relatively large quantity of purified proteins for subsequent use. Examples include the preparation of commercial products such as enzymes, nutritional proteins, and certain biopharmaceuticals. Analytical purification produces a relatively small amount of a protein for a variety of research or analytical purposes, including identification, quantification, and studies of the protein's structure, post-translational modifications and function. Pepsin and urease were the first proteins purified to the point that they could be crystallized. Preliminary steps equals Extraction equals, depending on the source, the protein has to be brought into solution by breaking the tissue or cells containing it. There are several methods to achieve this, repeated freezing and thawing, sonication, homogenization by high pressure, filtration, or permeabilization by organic solvents. The method of choice depends on how fragile the protein is and how sturdy the cells are. Usually for most of the conventional purposes, column chromatography is used to achieve purification. After this extraction process soluble proteins will be in the solvent, and can be separated from cell membranes, DNA etc. by centrifugation. The extraction process also extracts proteases, which will start digesting the proteins in the solution. If the protein is sensitive to proteolysis, it is usually desirable to proceed quickly, and keep the extract cooled, to slow down proteolysis equals precipitation and differential solubilization equals in bulk protein purification a common first step to isolate proteins is precipitation with ammonium sulfate 2SO4 this is performed by adding increasing amounts of ammonium sulfate and collecting the different fractions of precipitate protein ammonium sulfate can be removed by dialysis the hydrophobic groups on the proteins gets exposed to the atmosphere and it attracts other protein hydrophobic groups and gets aggregated. Protein precipitated will be large enough to be visible. One advantage of this method is that it can be performed inexpensively with very large volumes. The first proteins to be purified are water-soluble proteins. Purification of integral membrane proteins requires disruption of the cell membrane in order to isolate any one particular protein from others that are in the same membrane compartment. Sometimes a particular membrane fraction can be isolated first, such as isolating mitochondria from cells before purifying a protein located in a mitochondrial membrane. A detergent such as sodium dodecyl sulfate can be used to dissolve cell membranes and keep membrane proteins in solution during purification. However, because SDS causes denaturation, milder detergents such as Triton X100 or CHAPS can be used to retain the protein's native conformation during complete purification. Equals ultracentrifugation equals Centrifugation is a process that uses centrifugal force to separate mixtures of particles of varying masses or densities suspended in a liquid. When a vessel containing a mixture of proteins or other particulate matter, such as bacterial cells, 
is rotated at high speeds, the inertia of each particle yields an outward force proportional to its mass. The tendency of a given particle to move through the liquid because of this force is offset by the resistance the liquid exerts on the particle. The net effect of spinning the sample in a centrifuge is that massive, small, and dense particles move outward faster than less massive particles or particles with more drag in the liquid. When suspensions of particles are spun in a centrifuge, a pellet may form at the bottom of the vessel that is enriched for the most massive particles with low drag in the liquid. Non-compacted particles remain mostly in the liquid called supernatant, and can be removed from the vessel thereby separating the supernatant from the pellet. The rate of centrifugation is determined by the angular acceleration applied to the sample, typically measured in comparison to the g. If samples are centrifuged long enough, the particles in the vessel will reach equilibrium wherein the particles accumulate specifically at a point in the vessel where their buoyant density is balanced with centrifugal force. Such an equilibrium centrifugation can allow extensive purification of a given particle. Sucrose gradient centrifugation A euroalinear concentration gradient of sugar is generated in a tube such that the highest concentration is on the bottom and lowest on top. Perkel is a trademark owned by GE Healthcare Companies. A protein sample is then layered on top of the gradient and spun at high speeds in an ultracentrifuge. This causes heavy macromolecules to migrate towards the bottom of the tube faster than lighter material. During centrifugation in the absence of sucrose, as particles move farther and farther from the center of rotation, they experience more and more centrifugal force. The problem with this is that the useful separation range of within the vessel is restricted to a small observable window. Spinning a sample twice as long doesn't mean the particle of interest will go twice as far, in fact, it will go significantly further. However, when the proteins are moving through a sucrose gradient, they encounter liquid of increasing density and viscosity. A properly designed sucrose gradient will counteract the increasing centrifugal force so the particles move in close proportion to the time they have been in the centrifugal field. Samples separated by these gradients are referred to as rate zonal centrifugations. After separating the protein particles, the gradient is then fractionated and collected. Purification strategies Choice of a starting material is key to the design of a purification process. In a plant or animal, a particular protein usually isn't distributed homogeneously throughout the body. Different organs or tissues have high or lower concentrations of the protein. Use of only the tissues or organs with the highest concentration decreases the volumes needed to produce a given amount of purified protein. If the protein is present in low abundance, or if it has a high value, Scientists may use recombinant DNA technology to develop cells that will produce large quantities of the desired protein. Recombinant expression allows the protein to be tagged, for example by a his tag, to facilitate purification, which means that the purification can be done in fewer steps. In addition, recombinant expression usually starts with a higher fraction of the desired protein than is present in a natural source. An analytical purification generally utilizes three properties to separate proteins. First, proteins may be purified according to their isoelectric points by running them through a pH-graded gel or an ion exchange column. Second, proteins can be separated according to their size or molecular weight via size exclusion chromatography or by SDS page analysis. Proteins are often purified by using 2D page and are then analyzed by peptide mass fingerprinting to establish the protein identity. This is very useful for scientific purposes and the detection limits for protein are nowadays very low and nanogram amounts of protein are sufficient for their analysis. Thirdly, proteins may be separated by polarity hydrophobicity via high-performance liquid chromatography or reversed phase chromatography. Usually a protein purification protocol contains one or more chromatographic steps. The basic procedure in chromatography is to flow the solution containing the protein through a column packed with various materials. Different proteins interact differently with a column material, and can thus be separated by the time required to pass the column, or the conditions required to elute the protein from the column. 
Usually proteins are detected as they are coming off the column by their absorbance at 280 nanometers. Many different chromatographic methods exist. Equals size exclusion chromatography equals. Chromatography can be used to separate protein in solution or denaturing conditions by using porous gels. This technique is known as size exclusion chromatography. The principle is that smaller molecules have to traverse a larger volume in a porous matrix. Consequentially, proteins of a certain range in size will require a variable volume of eluent before being collected at the other end of the column of gel. In the context of protein purification, the eluent is usually pulled in different test tubes. All test tubes containing no measurable trace of the protein to purify are discarded. The remaining solution is thus made of the protein to purify and any other similarly sized proteins. Equals separation based on charge or hydrophobicity equals. Hydrophobic interaction chromatography, HIC media is amphiphilic, with both hydrophobic and hydrophilic regions, allowing for separation of proteins based on their surface hydrophobicity. In pure water, the interactions between the resin and the hydrophobic regions of protein would be very weak, but this interaction is enhanced by applying a protein sample to HIC resin in high ionic strength buffer. The ionic strength of the buffer is then reduced to elute proteins in order of decreasing hydrophobicity. Ion exchange chromatography Ion exchange chromatography separates compounds according to the nature and degree of their ionic charge. The column to be used is selected according to its type and strength of charge. Anion exchange resins have a positive charge and are used to retain and separate negatively charged compounds, while cation exchange resins have a negative charge and are used to separate positively charged molecules. Before the separation begins a buffer is pumped through the column to equilibrate the opposing charged ions. Upon injection of the sample, Solute molecules will exchange with the buffer ions as each competes for the binding sites on the resin. The length of retention for each solute depends upon the strength of its charge. The most weakly charged compounds will elute first, followed by those with successively stronger charges. Because of the nature of the separating mechanism, pH, buffer type, buffer concentration, and temperature all play important roles in controlling the separation. Ion exchange chromatography is a very powerful tool for use in protein purification and is frequently used in both analytical and preparative separations. Free flow electrophoresis Free flow electrophoresis is a carrier free electrophoresis technique that allows preparative protein separation in a laminar buffer stream by using an orthogonal electric field. By making use of a pH gradient, that can, for example, be induced by amphilites. This technique allows to separate protein as it forms up to a resolution of 